guys how is everybody doing today we are going to be looking at fractions and today we're looking at equivalent fractions for those of you who are joining for the very first time my name is Kai Harrison and I'm not only teaching math I do trivias and I do language arts also every saturday night i am live on youtube at 8 p.m with my trivia and giveaways who don't like giveaways so join me every saturday night now today as i said we will be looking at equivalent fractions we have looked at changing um, improper fractions to mixed numbers and changing mixed numbers to improper fractions if you have to miss those videos you need to go back and check them out. But let us talk about equivalent fractions first. So notice I underlined EQU because when I see EQU in a word, I think equal, equal. So equivalent fractions mean they are equal. So if two fractions or three fractions are equivalent, they have the same value. They just have different names, but they have the same value. Now on the board, I have some diagrams and you know I like to show you shapes before I go into actual numbers. So I have three circles at the top, but notice they are all cut into different sizes. So this circle is cut in two, this is cut in four, and this is cut in eight. Now think of it as a pizza, or for my Jamaican peeps, a bulla. So if I cut my bulla or my pizza in two parts, and I eat one part and give you one part, it means that we both got one half because one part out of the two that is one half or we can simply say a half now if i have another bulla or another pizza and this time i cut it into four slices it's the same size bulla or the same size pizza this time i cut it into four slices but i still need a half i cannot take one no, because if I take one slice, that's not a half. So I'm going to have to take another slice. So I would have to take two slices out of the whole, which is four slices, in order to get my half. So it simply means two-fourth is another name for one half. Now, look at this bulla or this pizza. What do you notice? I cut it into smaller slices. Now, because I cut it into smaller slices, in order for me to get a half, I am going to have to get more slices. So, let's see how many slices I'd need to get to get the half. It couldn't be one. It couldn't be two. It couldn't be three. But yes, look at that. It is four slices. Can you see the half? Look at this. Can you see the half of my crooked bulla or my crooked pizza? Yes. So there you go. Half, half, half. They are all saying one half, but using different names. So this one would be four out of eight, which would be four eighths. So it simply means one half is equal to two fourths and it is also equal to four eighths two fourths is also equal to four eighths so one half two fourths and four eighths are all equal they are equivalent fractions so remember depending on how many parts the whole is divided into you are going to get more pieces or more parts to make your half. 
So if it's divided into a hundred pieces, then you have to get 50 pieces to make your half. If it's divided into 50 pieces, you have to get 25 pieces to make your half because the more you divide it, the smaller they come. So the more pieces you'll be getting, but in the end, you'll be getting the same amount. Let's look at these rectangles. And don't tell me they are not rectangles. Remember, I am not measuring, so they are not drawn to scale. But I am telling you that these three rectangles are the same size. Now, let's pretend what could we have with a rectangular shape that we want? A cake. So let's pretend I bake a cake in rectangular pans. It's not one cake. I bake three cakes, same sizes, in a rectangular pan. But when I decide to cut the first cake, I said, I want a big chunk of it. So I'm cutting it in three slices. The whole cake is cut into three slices. So then my denominator would be three. Now this time I want two slices out of the three. So I'm getting two thirds of the cake. I'm leaving one third. If you want it, you can have it but I need two thirds. Later on, I decide I'm gonna take two thirds out of this cake too. But I remember that I'd cut this cake into smaller slices. How am I gonna know two thirds? Let's see how many slices that I cut this one into. One, two, three, four, five, six. I cut this cake into six slices. Now I want two thirds of it. Could I go take one slice? No, because this is already two and it's bigger slices. So it couldn't be two slices either. Could it be three slices? No. Could it be four slices? Yes, it is four slices. Now, if I was using measurement and I measured this, these, all these cakes or these rectangles, when I take these four parts out and put it on these four parts, they would be the same size because they are the same amount, just smaller slices. So this one would be four, six. Now, what do you notice? This cake is so tiny probably more people coming to the party and we want to make sure that it can share who knows but I still want two-thirds they can take the other slices and do whatever they want so how many slices is this cake cut into one two three four five six seven eight nine slices so my denominator is nine now if I want two-thirds could I go take one no. Could I go take two? They're too small. Could I go take three or four? No, because this is already four and these are bigger slices. So I couldn't take four. You know what? I'm going to have to take six slices. So this time, this would become six nines. Now, six nines, four six, and two thirds are all equal as i said before if i used the measurement and these cakes were all the same exactly the same size then i could cut off this part i could cut off this part i could cut off this part and i could put them together and they would be the same size just different amount of slices and because of the different amount of slices they get different names but they are the same. They are equal. So two thirds, four six, six nines are all equivalent fractions. Now, do I always have to use a diagram? No, I don't always have to use a diagram. I can calculate to find equivalent fraction. So let us try some of those. I'm going to use the same one half that we just used a while ago. Now, if I want to find an equivalent fraction of half without using diagram, I simply have to multiply. 
Now there are other times when I can divide to find an equivalent fraction. But how do I know when to multiply or when to divide? I can multiply, only multiply, when the denominator is in its lowest term. It cannot be broken down any further, meaning there is no number that can equally be divided into both the numerator and the denominator. The only number that we could equally divide into one and two is one. We never use one when we're finding equivalent fractions to either multiply or divide because any number you multiply by one, you're gonna get back the same number. So if you multiply a half by one, you're gonna end up with a half. We don't want to find a half, we want to find another fraction that is equal to an, a half, but with a different name. So in this case, we have to multiply. So I can multiply and I like to do smaller numbers. So if they just tell me they want three equivalent fractions for a half, you can use any three numbers to multiply and whatever you get for your answer, once you multiply correctly, that is going to be an equivalent fraction of a half. So I'm going to use two, three small numbers. So I'm using two first. Anything you do to the numerator, you have to do it to the denominator. So I'm multiplying the numerator by two. I'm also going to multiply the denominator by two. So two times one, that's two. And two times two, that's four. It simply means, and if you remember, in the first one, we got two fourths for the second pizza. So one half is equivalent to two fourths. We could use another number. We could use three. Remember, if you're just finding any equivalent fraction, you can use any number you want to use. So three times one, that's three. And three times two, that's six. So one half, two fourths, and three six are equivalent fractions. So I'm going to put three six up here. They're all equivalent. What if you feel smart and you want to use a bigger number? No problem. Just remember, if you're not good with your time times tables and they didn't tell you which specific ones they want, if it's not multiple choice you're fitting in your answers, multiply by smaller numbers. But eight times one, that's eight, and eight times two, that's 16. It also means that eight sixteen is equal to a half. Let's look at another one. What if I give you six twelfths? Now, in this case, you can choose to multiply or you can choose to divide. If it's a multiple choice answer, you have to do what you have to do to get the answer they give you. But if they just tell you to list three equivalent fractions for six twelfths, then you can either multiply or divide. How do I know I can divide? Because I know that there are some numbers that can equally divide into six and also equally divide into 12. Now, I can use two. So if I divide 6 by 2, I must divide 12 by 2 as well. So if I divide 6 by 2, I get 3. And if I divide 12 by 2, I get 6. Now, if you don't know and you, you if you don't know your tables, you can skip count. So 2, 4, 6. Then you'd know that 1, 2, 3. So 6 divided by 2 would be 3. And you skip count to 12 again. 8, 10, 12. And that would tell you 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. That 12 divided by 2 is 6. So if you don't know the tables, remember you can always skip count. So 6 twelfths is equivalent to 3 6. We can go a little further. Is there any other number that we can equally divide into 6 and 12? Of course, we can use 3. So, 6 divided by 3 and 12 divided by 3. So, 6 divided by 3, that's 2. 
and 12 divided by 3, that's 4. So, 6 twelfths, 3 sixths, and 2 fourths are all equivalent fractions. Let's try another one. Let's try 4, 4 tenths. So for 4 tenths, again, we can either multiply or we can divide. It depends on what we want to do or what our answers are. So which number can equally divide into 4 and 2? 2. two. So I'm going to divide 4 by 2, and I'm dividing 10 by 2. So 4 divided by 2, that is 2, and 10 divided by 2, that is 5. So 4 tenths is equivalent to 2 fifths. Now, that we cannot find any more by dividing, so if we need more, we have to multiply. So 4 tenths, we can multiply by 2. 4 times 2, that's 8. 10 times 2, that's 20. So 820 is also equivalent to 4 tenths and 2 fifths. We can go a little further and multiply again. So let's try 5 this time. 5 times 4, that's 20. And 10 times 5, that's 50. So 4 tenths. Is equal to 2 fifths which is also equal to 8 twentieths and is also equal to 20 fiftieths so remember you can use your diagram but when the numbers get really big then you need to know how to either divide or multiply so remember if you can find a number that can equally divide into both the numerator and the denominator then you can divide if not you have to multiply and remember whatever you multiply by at the top you have to multiply by it at the bottom as well that's it for today guys when we meet again for math we will be looking at how to reduce fractions to their lowest term and then we can go into some addition and subtraction so remember to like this video share it with all your friends and families and leave a comment give me a thumbs up and subscribe if you have not yet done so i'll see you soon when we will be looking at another interesting topic bye